According to the CDC, one in two black gay men and one in four Latino gay men will get an HIV diagnosis within their lifetime. But for me, it's more personal. These were real life people that I knew, real life people that I love. These were the people at the epicenter of the HIV epidemic. HIV treatment has evolved enormously. I remember when I was coming out of medical school, we still had patients who were on large amounts of pills, whereas now we have several options that are one pill once a day. Many of us who were around then talked about what we call the paradigm shift. I believe we're at the same kind of inflection point now, that between highly effective treatments and pre-exposure prophylaxis, we can end the epidemic. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Getting to zero is the goal of getting to zero new infections, zero AIDS-related deaths, and zero HIV-related stigma. People who are in treatment whose virus is suppressed do not transmit HIV to their partners. It is, you know, the key tenet now of what's called treatment as prevention. What's also been added to this area of treatment as prevention is the flip side. People who are not infected, who take uh, specific medication, can protect themselves against HIV. The current generation of PrEP is a single pill once a day for people who know that they are not likely to use condoms in a setting where they may be exposed to HIV. When I got on PrEP, it really was about how is it that I can stay negative and how is it that I can raise my own community's um, knowledge about um, Truvada as prevention, as HIV prevention. I highly encourage everyone who is uh, sexually active, any man who has sex with men who is sexually active, just to um, get on PrEP. When I first got diagnosed, it was obviously a challenge to figure out how to grapple with. It's the personal social stuff that makes it challenging still. Disclosure, stigma, things like that. I feel like in general, I'm one of the lucky ones where it's something I can manage for the rest of my life. We're trying to not just address access to medications. I mean, a biomedical approach is not going to get us to zero. So it's not just HIV as an infection, it's HIV and all of the issues that a person living with HIV may be dealing with. They prefer to get the second gauge one if you're gonna do a study. The reality of HIV is the reality of my life, seeing as that I am a transgender woman of color. And most people, when they approach me or they know what I do for work, they automatically assume that I'm HIV positive, which I'm HIV negative. I am helping people in my community beyond medical care and prevention by assisting them with a wide range of essential services or assisting them with finding a culturally competent um, PCP or surgeon. It's really difficult to be around people and be so vulnerable. Cultural competency is a huge piece of this puzzle. You know, people need to feel comfortable talking to healthcare providers, whether they be their doctor, their nurse. You need to have that interpersonal interaction and you need not to feel as though you're being stereotyped. We need to address housing issues, homelessness issues, nutrition issues. So that's pretty much the basis of my job is knocking down these barriers. It's got to be such a multifaceted approach if we're going to be successful. But when it gets down to sort of like, it, was, it actually talks about the facility level data. There are 700 new infections per year here in this state. It makes it harder to get to zero, actually, when you think about it, just because you have to think that those are oftentimes the most vulnerable individuals who are contracting HIV here in the state because we're doing so well overall. When I was approached, you know, by my first, you know, PCP, my primary care provider, he um, told me, Oscar, you're gonna be the first generation that is going to survive the HIV virus. Getting to zero for me personally means that I can look at the community of people living with HIV and say, we're the last generation that has to live through this. It's all about the education and the advocacy that we go out and we educate people in the community and let them know the things that they can do to protect themselves and their loved ones. I think that we will start to see a lower and lower amount of new HIV infections year by year until we get to zero. And I think that we have the ability in Massachusetts, we have the education, we have the resources, and we have the community that wants to work to make this happen.